Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. In today's video we are finding a use finally for an AMD FX CPU. Hi. Absolutely. I know it's going to <laughs> Okay, so a use for an FX these days is actually quite limited. Uh, if you are still using one of these CPUs, um, and, you know, if you can't upgrade, you know, fair enough, you, you're stuck with it, so be it. Um, but if you can upgrade, I really strongly suggest you do that because it is significantly better to go with anything made in the past five years. Um, Intel or AMD uh, will just absolutely smack that, uh, that particular CPU. But let's ignore that uh, and focus compute completely on what this video is about. Um, and the whole reason for going with an FX build this time is because I need to put a computer in my garage. Now, if you know anything about garages, uh, you will know that they're generally not a friendly environment. They're generally very dust ridden. Uh, they can have rodents uh, who decide to live in them because they're not very weather sealed. Um, or they are weather sealed, but they're not, you know, there's little holes and stuff for things to get, in, uh, to get into that you don't want in there. Uh, and effectively, it's a place that you don't want to put nice things that aren't intended to be left outside, i.e. a computer. So, with that in mind, the FX CPU fits the bill perfectly. Uh, what I need the computer to do is to play YouTube videos, I need it to be able to play maybe some music, uh, and I need it to do some web browsing. So, three very easy tasks that an FX CPU is still quite capable of doing. So. That's why we're going with this build. Um, it's purely, I need a computer. I have this as a spare motherboard and CPU. Um, and the last time I used it, it was pretty reliable. So, you know, why not? So, CPU FX 6300 uh, motherboard is a ASRock 970 Pro 3. Um, a really bottom of the barrel AMD motherboard. Uh, it has no VRM heatsink, which means no overclocking, um, which we won't, wouldn't be doing anyway. There's no need to. Uh, we'll also have a 256 gig SSD, uh, more than enough for this particular system. Um, we will also be going with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Uh, the reason for that is, again, spare RAM, and I would like to have 16 gig in everything that I make, even my computers that I don't care about. Uh, Cooling, we are using a rather good for the time AD heatsink. It has a copper heat plate on the bottom uh, and is a bit thicker than the actual heatsink that came with the CPU. So, cooling potential should be enough for an FX CPU. Um, although, I will say FX when not overclocked uh, wasn't unreasonable. It was just very underpowered. Um, so, you kind of had to overclock them. So, in its stock TDP package, uh, that cooler will be perfect. Now, Moving right along, uh, we have a graphics card. It is a 9600 GT. That is a 13, 14, 15 year old graphics card, quite old. Uh, it, I don't believe it even supports DirectX 11. Um, and that is where our OS choice comes in. Uh, may seem controversial. I am going with Windows 8.1 Pro on this machine. Uh, the drivers for that particular GPU in Windows 10 are not that good. Um, I've heard they can be uh, well, just straight up terrible um, regardless. Uh, I could go Windows 7, but I'm putting this computer online and Windows 7 is no longer patched. So I'd rather go on an OS that's still technically in support. 8.1 is technically in support for another two years, um, which I expect to be the life of this system. Uh, so yes, Windows 8.1. As terrible as it is, we're going with it. And side note, I understand that Linux is the thing. I love Linux. I just don't love Linux as a desktop OS. Uh, I really want Windows on this because I may need to install Windows specific applications on it. So that is why we're not putting Linux on it. But whoever is about to jump in the comments and tell me about it, um, I completely agree, agree with you. Linux is a perfectly fine application, just not for my use case. So bear that in mind. Power supply, 500 watt Cougar. Piece of junk, not even 80 plus. It's up to 80% efficiency, which means a load of crap. Um, but it came with a case, so you know, it's fine. It's 500 watts, it'll do for this. 
Uh, moving along, we have a case. We have a, for the time, rather nice case. It is a Thermaltake Soprano with an acrylic side panel, lots of 3.5 inch drive base for zero uh, 3.5 inch drives, and a DVD burner. Uh, yes, this build will have a DVD burner in it, of all things. Um, yes, uh, again, choice for the case is quite simple. I want something old and robust, and I just don't care about it, so this fits the bill. Uh, the other reason is it's actually quite closed off, so I'm not going to get lots of dust in the system, uh, whereas if I use like a mesh case or something like that, would be a terrible idea because there is lots of dust, including sawdust from when I do uh, work uh, woodwork out there. So, yeah. Case suits the situation. Uh, that's enough jibber jabbering. Let's put the system together and uh, see how it performs in 2021. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment of truth. Uh, we're gonna see if it fires up, and uh, well, if it does, we're gonna install Windows on it, and then see how it performs. Hey! Excellent, it boots. Uh, let's install Windows 8.1 on it and uh, see how the performance is of this old clunker. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have Windows 8.1 installed on this machine. Now, uh, you'll notice quite, uh, if you can see this here, uh, I have a BitLocker prompt here. And that is on purpose. Now, for context, if you don't know what BitLocker is, uh, BitLocker is the Microsoft encryption service. Uh, there's many ways it can be deployed, but the way that I have deployed it uh, is I have encrypted the hard drive or SSD on this machine, the boot drive uh, or C drive, and it's encrypted in such a way that if anyone attempts to access the drive without the key, uh, that data is inaccessible. So you can't take the SSD out and put it in another system and uh, crack the SAM database password. That's a way to break into a machine with physical access. Um, very easy to do. You'd be shocked at uh, how, how, how frighteningly easy it is to crack any Windows machine um, with, that doesn't have BitLocker on it. Um, so with that in mind, given that this machine may potentially be stolen, uh, the best thing to do is to encrypt it. Now, it doesn't have encryption on board um, because it doesn't have a TPM module. Uh, it needs, for Windows 8.1, it needs a TPM 1.2. Uh, this does not have a TPM 1.2. In fact, it has no TPM module because it's a gaming-focused machine, uh, and it's a gaming-focused machine from a very long time ago. Uh, now, modern computers, all almost all of them have a TPM in them, uh, whether that's through the CPU or the motherboard or whatever. Um, it will have some level of TPM chip in it. Uh, but the FX era CPUs, that was not really important uh, and they didn't have it back then, at least not on a consumer grade machine. So, 
The way you get around that problem is you have a USB key. Now, the USB key has the uh, key or code to unlock the SSD in this machine. So what happens is I now turn on the machine and it will boot into Windows 8.1, no questions asked. And there you go. Simple as that. So that is BitLocker. Um, you should consider enabling it if you feel like your machine could be compromised at any point. Um, but if you're going to enable it, make sure you look into it because if you do lose the encryption key, there is no way to get the data. So it's absolutely critical. If I use this, lose this USB drive uh, or the USB drive fails, uh, and I don't have a backup of the key, I have no way of recovering the data on this SSD and I'll have to wipe it and start all over again, which I don't care about because I'm not going to keep anything on the machine. So um, that's BitLocker. Now, let's dive into the specifics of this machine uh, and see how it performs. Now, from the basic usage I've done so far, it has actually surprised me quite a bit. Um, I've not used an operating system, uh, well, not used a Windows operating system other than Windows 10 for some time. Uh, now, even modern systems running Windows 10, I've noticed are starting to chug when they don't have, you know, decent hardware. So not just like an SSD. Um, you need an SSD, a good CPU, good RAM. Um, GPU acceleration doesn't matter too much, but you need some level of GPU acceleration uh, for the for the desktop, whether that be an IGP or whatever. Um, but generally, I found Windows 10 is actually running really poor on uh, lower spec systems, and especially systems that have less than eight or less gigs of RAM. Um, this, however, 8.1, running on an FX CPU, uh, and it now has eight gig of RAM. I had to downgrade the RAM because it was not compatible with this machine. Um, so we're now down to eight gigs. Uh, and to be honest, uh, with 8.1, I think it's enough. Um, like with windows loaded and everything on there, it's only utilizing like, we'll, we'll look now, like, uh, one gig of memory usage, like windows 10 never does that. Windows 10 by default will use four gig of RAM just for the bloody OS these days. So, um, I'm starting to question whether I should even be putting Windows 10 on an older machine, and I think that will be the next video I do, uh, investigating, you know, the bloated modern version of Windows 10 versus uh, Windows 8.1, because Windows 8.1 is still technically supported, uh, which means you can still run it as a daily OS. Um, you'll lose DirectX 12 and things like that. Um, but I'm starting to come around to this OS, and I'm starting to think, well, why don't I just run Windows 8.1? Because it seems to run a lot better on this system. But there are some quirks, so let's get into that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're booted into Windows now, and uh, as you can see, the system's up and running here. Um, now, I've opened a few different Chrome tabs here, um, just done a few different applications. I haven't got a lot installed on this machine, on this machine um, because it's it's a light machine. It's, it's not got a lot of stuff on it. It's mostly the web browser where I'm doing everything. Uh, and you know what, for web browsing, it is fantastic. Uh, I might also say in going with the choice of installing Windows 8.1 because of the GPU was the best decision I made. Um, like, have a look at this. So Chrome's running, I've got a video running here in the background. Uh, and the memory usage in Windows 8.1, 2.7 gigabytes. That is less than Windows 10 at idle. Yes, okay, you can see the saltiness coming in, out in me about Windows 10. I really hate that operating system. Uh, but we haven't got a choice. If you want to run Windows, you kind of have to run Windows 10 at this point. I guess you can run 8.1 for my use case, but if you're gaming, you kind of have to go 10, you don't have a choice. It has DirectX 12. Um, but that's beside the point. This system uh, does quite well. Uh, there is a problem that it does have, and that is 4K video playback. It does stutter and jitter and stop. All right, here we go. Here was the 4K video I brought up here. Um, so this is a 4K... <laughs> video, uh, it's a more recent one. Um, the one I was playing back before was quite a while ago, so it was on the older camera. This is uh, filmed on the current camera I'm using right now. Uh, and as you can see, the CPU usage on the poor FX up here is, it's just absolutely pegged trying to do the video. Um, it'll have moments where it 100% out, and then the clip stream will just clip. So 4K playback, not really doable on an FX processor, which is a bit of a shame. I thought it would be, but apparently not. 
but that's really the only weakness I've found. Um, the web browsing performance is fine. I've got a bunch of tabs open. Uh, memory usage is really low. Uh, it's at three gig um, with a few apps open with Chrome, 4K video. Like it's pretty lean. This Windows 8.1 install. So uh, I'm pretty happy I went with that choice. Um, I knew it would be better than Windows 10. I didn't realize it would be this much better than Windows 10. So that's um, that's pretty good. Um, so that would mean that means also that my eight gig of RAM that I have in this system is actually fine because uh, you know you haven't got a uh, um, very hungry Windows 10 OS eating all my memory. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to have a lot of things to say about the system because there's, there's no gaming aspect, there's no editing, there's no, it can't do workstation stuff, it can't do intensive application, it does boring applications that you do with your cheap $500 laptop. That's basically the performance of this machine. Um, it's nothing flash, especially by modern standards, but it is sufficient for my needs. So that, that is that is a key thing here. I've solved my problem. Uh, I have my encryption and all the little things. So um, I hope this video is entertaining. Uh, and one last segue into the, um, the, the, the reason behind making this system, because uh, I haven't just made this system to put it in my garage just to make a video. There is actually a reason behind it. Uh, and that is that I have started a new channel. Uh, it is called the Motorsport Noob. Uh, I will put a link to in the video description to it. Uh, it has one video currently, but a new video will be going up shortly. Um, now, the content base around that channel is purely motor motorsport focused. Uh, I decided as opposed to turning TechFurb into this sort of hybrid channel where you get tech videos and car videos, it, it's they're not conducive subjects. Um, so I decided to separate it. So TechFurb will stay as TechFurb. Uh, I'll continue to make content for TechFurb, but I'll also make content for the new channel Motorsport New. Um, now, if you're interested in getting into motorsport, please go and follow that channel uh, because the whole idea behind the Motorsport Noob channel is I am a complete noob when it comes to cars uh, and that channel is documenting my journey from I have no idea what I'm doing to me sitting in the start line of a rally car uh, and beyond. So that, that is that is the, the goal of the Motorsport Noob channel. It's about me getting into motorsport uh, with a focus on rallying, but I'll do lots of different things along the way show you how to fix your car, show you how to work on your car and, and show how incompetent I am at fixing a car and show you what not to do and, and all those different things. So that's the idea behind that channel. Um, I've left it to the end of the video because I don't want to, you know, it's a tech for a video, not a motorsport new video. So um, there will be that separation. Uh, content will still go up on this channel. Uh, and as for this video, I hope you found it informative. Uh, it is something a little different. Normally I do gaming focused content or something a bit more intensive than look at my computer that runs a web browser because that's very interesting. It's not very interesting. Um, very dull topic, but I've managed to find a use for an FX processor. So I guess that's the whole allure of the video. Someone's found a use for them at last. Um, and as much as I like to hate on them, they're really not that bad. Um, you know, yes, it can't do 4K video. Yes, it can't do this, can't do that. But you know, if your grandmother or your kids come to you and say, I need a computer, grab that FX out of the shed or someone's FX that they've just sort of left in the corner to rot because it's completely useless to them now. And there you go. That's the use for that computer. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching guys. Give it a like if you liked it. Dislike if you uh, didn't like it. Uh, comments down below if you've got any questions for me or if you have any um, experiences to share of your FX computer that you are still running in 2021. Ooh. Uh, get a new CPU if you uh, have one of these and you can afford to get a new CPU because it is so much better. Um, but I digress. Uh, subscribe if you haven't been gotten subscribed already and I'll catch you guys in the next video.